Oh, yeah. Hey, I have something to say. Sean Sean talked about this show, I think maybe like two years ago, but I started watching... Storage Wars. I started watching Storage Wars. No, you're going to recognize this. It's a show called Locked Up Abroad. Oh, yeah. Sean's talked about that. Um, it's that sounds re- horrible. It's really good. It's on Netflix. It's pretty interesting. The first episode, let me tell you about it. These guys are from the UK, and they are... Can, they are um, or the chat was. I was to, talking uh, about oh. locked up abroad. Oh, that's right. Oh yes, locked, locked up, abroad. up abroad. Real quick, in the first episode, these two guys from the UK are talked into going to Venezuela and smuggling cocaine back to the UK, and they're told, "Yeah, you know what? I'll, you'll be paid eight thousand dollars each, and you'll have a two week vacation in Venezuela, all expenses paid, five star hotel." They talk about how they get to Venezuela, they have the vacation, and then these like gangsters take them to a remote location and put bulletproof vests on them filled with cocaine. And they're like, this is so much more cocaine than we Whoa. that we agreed to smuggle oh, back. But oh at this point, God, at this point we've been like on this vacation, we're at a five-star hotel, they've they've paid for us to come out here, like we can't just not do this. So, uh, they go to the airport, they go to customs, they go through everything. They With, go, they've got bulletproof, they got vests, bulletproof on. vests on. They're talking about like, if you look at us, we're fine. But if anybody touches us, we're fucked. This is before X-ray machines, right? This was 1996. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. And they, they talk about like at one point, some guy in Venezuela tries to help them with their bags. I'm like, no, get the fuck away! In the middle of the airport, Whoa. and one is like, okay, we don't need that. Anyways, they're about to get on their plane. Like, okay, everybody board the London Heathrow plane. They go down the tunnel to get on their plane. And they're like, and there's a guy there standing in front of the doorway to the plane. And he's patting everybody down. Oh, no. Everybody. And we just know, like, fuck. That's it. What are we going to do? How, how do we get past this guy without him touching us? But he's, like, locked eyes on us, staring. And there's nowhere to go. And he touches us, and he just nods his head, no. These, are, these guys aren't getting on the plane. They take them to, like, a five-story police headquarters with just barred windows. It's just a giant prison. Whoa. It's, it's a police holding station and they leave them in there and they're charged with four years they have to serve four years in a venezuelan prison and the british government cuts a deal and they say don't send these two to state prison keep them in the holding area and those guys talk about they're like they thought they were doing us a favor they had no idea what what they were doing we were just in there with you know 50 guys there was no sunlight we never saw the sun rise or set just pretty much darkness blah 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 there this is where it gets crazy after about two this is where it gets yeah. crazy. After about two and a half yeah. years, the deal is done. These guys get sent to state prison. Venezuelan state prison. And they say, we heard stories that in, in the state prison, there were no rules. You could buy knives. You could buy guns. You could buy grenades. In the prison. What? Yeah. And they said that the, the overpopulation, the crowding problem is so bad that it is one guard for every 150 <laughs> prisoners. And they said that it's literally just a guard oh. in a tower with a machine gun turret watching over basically a population of people who are walking around with guns in their belts, walking around holding knives, literally just holding grenades. They said that oh four to God. five people are murdered in the prison a week. The two guys who were, you know, in their early 20s get oh. to this prison and they said our first week there, it was, I think we were there for two days and somebody came up to us and he said, hey, you ever seen somebody die before? And they said, no. And he was, said, well, today. You're going to. And they, oh. said, they said about two hours later, somebody was like standing in line to get some food or something, and somebody walked up, put a gun to their back of the head, and pulled the trigger. And then they were like, and then everybody just went on like it was normal prison life. There's a guy laying there with his brains on the floor. And that's just it. That's, that's the world we were in. Four, five, six guys a week. We'd go to bed every night just thinking, am I going to live through tomorrow? Am I going to live through the week? Wow. We would hear guys getting raped in the middle of the night. Did they do reenactments on the show? Yeah, they, they, they show stock footage and reenactments. Like, there's guys getting raped. You can hear it. You can't do anything about it. You cry, and you just pray that it's not going to be you. But if it is, it is. Oh, there's it nothing is. you can do. Jesus. This is Storage Wars? <laughs> this is Storage Wars. <laughs> No, blah, 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 blah. It's, no, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a good episode. Check it out. They talk about how they lost their... Mo- they were normal kind of guys, and they go, hey, after four years in that prison, I'm ready to die. I start playing Russian roulette. I don't oh give a God. fuck. <laughs> yeah. They don't give a fuck. It's a great episode. Episode two, these two girls go to Peru to smuggle cocaine. They're arrested. What could go wrong? We were in jail. It was so boring. Boring? <laughs> there was, you can't imagine... How boring it is. So, hey, episode one was really good. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, the guys in Venezuela are playing Russian roulette. The the people in their cell are armed with grenades. And r- grenade-armed rapists. Grenade-armed rapists. Just 
fucking you and holding the, the pin in front of your dangling eyes. Please just let me go to prison and be Oh, dangling the pins. Their eyes as they dangle from their socks. Because they've been socked What better out. experience could yeah. you have than to be bored? You don't want excitement! Yeah. You don't want to get fucked while someone's holding a grenade over you? <laughs> just dangling no, in front of your face. You some more dangling your eyes. <laughs> you get bored enough, you do want that. I guess. I just thought that was such... I mean, their story, it was interesting, too, and not to diminish what they went through, but it was... Those girls obviously don't care or understand what anybody else's plight is, and it doesn't really reflect on what they went through. But as a viewer, going from one story to the other, it's just like, ah, uh, this one's a little bit lighter. <laughs> a little bit. So there you go. Locked up abroad. Locked up abroad and storage wars back to back marathon. Doctor <laughs> Doctor Mouse is writing poor Barbara. We're not talking about locking up abroad. I think she's yeah. all fine. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Take care of myself. Have you guys watched Storage Wars though? What about Horror Wars? I'm not letting go of it. I can't oh, believe nice that's one. a show. What? Storage Wars. I've seen Storage Wars. What? Oh. <laughs> um <laughs> that like a peach. Sorry. Yeah, I'm Sorry, I'm gentle. Oh, okay.